This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Aaron Granillo. In a few minutes, we'll talk about the promising results of an early vaccine trial. But first, let's talk about food, restaurants. If the stay-at-home orders were lifted on June 1st, would you run out to your favorite restaurant for a sit-down meal? Well, the new Washington State University study suggests you would probably not. Nearly 66 percent said they would not go out for a sit-down meal right away. Nearly half of the 800 study respondents say they would wait one to three months before sitting down at a restaurant. Here's the study's author, Professor Don Gersoy. Our results uh, show that the most important thing that they will be looking for is hand sanitizing stations throughout the restaurant. Professor Gersoy also says customers want proper social distancing inside restaurants and That means obvious cleaning from the restaurant staff. They want visible evidence of sanitizing uh, the restaurant. So, Dave, uh, does this prove your theory that customers will decide when they come back, not Governor Inslee? Well, it's not my theory. I think it's the reality. You can't force people to go out and eat if they don't want to. But uh, I think the the mindset is you you put yourself in in the place of the virus. So if I'm a virus and I need a microglobule to live, right, where would I go? And, of course, you'd go to a place where human beings were spreading microglobules by sitting close together and uh, talking to each other. So I I think you'll probably see people choosing restaurants that have, for example, a booth, perhaps with some sort of uh, plexiglass uh, barrier Mm. so that they can they can eat as a family of people who have been isolating together for, what, two months now, but don't find themselves uh, downwind of any strangers who they they can't trust. I think you're also seeing people say that they don't want to handle a menu that lots of other people have handled. And uh, I, I actually don't mind that. I, I wouldn't mind actually a system where you sort of have a hybrid of uh, of takeout and eat in dining mm-hmm. where you uh, choose what you want to eat at the restaurant before you go there. And then when you sit down in your booth, it's ready for you. Maybe you might even have to prepay just so the restaurant doesn't lose money if you're a no-show. But you you there, you have your, your conversation, you eat the meal. Then instead of having you know to wait that extra 20, 30 minutes for the food to be served, all the while breathing in who knows what, uh, you eat the meal and and you go. Does this mean, Dave, that you would be okay at least you know ordering your food uh, prior and then going to the restaurant and picking it up? I think I would kind of prefer that. Mm-hmm. I, I, I find depending on the occasion, there's always that... That awkward pause between ordering and the arrival of the food where you're desperately trying to make conversation in some cases, especially if it goes on too long, I would be happy to have it ready when I when I get there. I think I'd be okay actually going to a sit-down restaurant at this point, especially with the, the phase two guidelines that the governor has instituted here. So, I mean, you know, things like 50% capacity, if all of the tables are six feet apart, if it's just me and my wife at a table... Uh, and, you know, the, the server's wearing a mask and they're providing hand sanitizer. That sounds like a setting where I like my odds that I'm mm-hmm. probably not going to catch the virus. I think some restaurants may also have to change the ventilation system somewhat because there are those studies indicating that if you have somebody who turns out to be sick and they may not know it, and they happen to sneeze, for example, mm-hmm. and you're downwind. There was that one study, I think it was the, it was an open restaurant setting where the ventilation doesn't pull the air up, but, you know, pulls it down the row of tables. There could be the chance of infection. But uh, I think as if a restaurant brings in at least some kind of, uh, what, HVAC guy mm-hmm. who can certify that the air is going up instead of across, that would also go a long way towards reassuring people that it's safe. By the way, there were a lot of people who didn't want to go to restaurants for a, a different reason because they didn't want to write down their names for that, yes. that that log, right? But Governor Inslee came out and said that that is actually now voluntary. You don't have to write your name if you go to a restaurant, give your, your personal information, your email, your phone number, so the state could try to ramp up contact tracing that way. So that is now voluntary. So that gives people uh, who were maybe didn't want to release some of their personal information more of an incentive to go out and eat. Right. And, I, and there could be an incentive to do that if you want to get a heads up just in case it turns out somebody who was infectious uh, happened to eat there. But um, I think we're finding that people are a little more comfortable 
complying with an optional directive, Mm -hmm. which sounds like a conflict in terms. But anyway, an optional directive rather than uh, some government official saying you must do this or else something. Optional directives also take effect today, by the way. The uh, the mask wearing policies in King County and at SeaTac Airport. Uh, well, actually, SeaTac is mandatory, but the optional directives uh, across the county and on metro buses, for instance, is you have to wear a mask if indoor and outdoor, if mm-hmm. social distancing cannot happen or if it's too difficult for that right. to happen. And you're not supposed to intimidate people or attempt to intimidate people who are not wearing masks, but... Um I checked, and there's there's no law against giving them the side eye. <laughs> Nothing you can do about that. What is happening in a lab in Massachusetts is raising spirits on Wall Street. Moderna Therapeutics announced this morning that its experimental vaccine for COVID-19 shows promising early results. The first eight participants in phase one of its COVID-19 vaccine trial developed antibodies after just one dose. The president of Moderna is Dr. Stephen Hoag. We characterized eight of those subjects and said, would it neutralize the virus in a viral replication assay? It showed that those same antibodies that those people had developed actually could neutralize the virus and prevent its ability to infect human cells. Altogether, uh, we're very pleased by that result because it suggests we're on the right path with this vaccine. Wall Street liked it, too, as we hear from CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger. U.S. stocks jumped by about 3 percent across the board. The news was a welcome relief for investors who were licking their wounds last week. The Nasdaq and the S&P 500 fell 1 to 2 percent. The Dow finished down 2.6 percent, its third negative week in four, and its worst week since April 3rd. Moderna stock soaring, too. Just looking at it right now, it's up 24 percent, uh, 16 bucks up a share. So trading now at uh, $82 as we record this. Uh, so are we close to being out of the woods, Dave? How soon could this vaccine hit the markets? Well, I'm told if everything goes as planned and this accelerated schedule works, it could be available by the end of this year or early 2021. But it's still not clear how many doses might be ready and how quickly it could be distributed. They have approval right now to test the vaccine with 600 more people. And then in July, we'll see if the FDA approves a third trial, testing it with thousands of healthy people to see if it makes a difference. And then uh, we'll have a, a much better idea as to whether it has been pronounced both safe and effective. And this also comes on the heels, by the way, of uh, President Trump last week announcing Operation Warp Speed. Uh, so, I mean, you, you know, you hear this news about uh, the Moderna vaccine. You would think that the FDA, if it shows any sign of of working, that it would fast track a, a, a vaccine. But there's a reason they have this extended testing. I'm old enough to remember the swine flu vaccine fiasco where there were apparently some problems with the vaccine itself. And the last thing you want to do, especially in this environment where there is a a core group of people who just don't trust vaccines, would be to release one that hasn't been completely tested. I can see if we have some kind of special extenuating circumstance where you might want to get a vaccine that is still in the earlier stages of uh, effectiveness testing. But I think for most people, they would want to wait for the finished product. We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.